I'm out. See you later, suckas. <laughs> So after 15 years of the public accounting hustle, as of 1231 last year, I'm out. I'm no longer running a firm. I'm not doing client work. I am gone. And I think a lot of us are, we're thinking about it. Hasn't been a fun few years and we're looking around a little more than we once did. And for me, what I realized was staying, doing the same same was the best thing for everyone around me, but it wasn't the best thing for me. Feel familiar? Did you just get a little tummy tingle? Let's go back to when I was 18 years old. I was working at a Safeway grocery store and I was about to leave for college, went into the general manager's office to give him my two weeks notice. Mr. McJenkins, so I'm gonna go to college. Here's my two weeks notice. Listen here, son. I've been in this game for 36 years and you're just about the best damn grocery bagger I've ever seen. You know, you could have my job someday, son. I'm not. I don't want that. That was a dramatization. But when I went to a small accounting firm after college and decided that just after a few years, Mr. McNulty, I don't think this is the firm for me anymore. Son, look around you. This could all be yours. I, I don't want that. So I went to a larger firm, eventually bought into it and ended up in the same place where staying was the best thing for everyone, everyone but me. And when we find ourselves in these situations, you can find a hundred reasons to stay. Call it loyalty, call it doing the right thing. If you run a firm, hey buddy, you're responsible for these people's livelihoods. And these are all completely valid emotions. But I'll tell you what I didn't wanna be is I didn't wanna be the guy that was the hero for everyone but my own family. The person who puts their cape on when they went to work and was so afraid of letting down their clients, letting down their colleagues, that they let down their family in the process. Yep, I know that guy all too well. I was on a path to becoming that guy. And let me tell you, being on the other side of that really hard decision of letting a lot of people down, people who came to the firm for my own vision. I'd hired people off of Twitter. We had a team of 40. Being on the other side of letting a bunch of people down, it's easy for me now to have the perspective that as much value as we assign to what we do, oh, I'm, I'm the only one that can help this client. I'm the best manager this person could ever have. If they didn't have me, they'd be up a crick. As much value as we assign to what we do, when you're out of the equation, the world's gonna keep spinning. People are generally gonna be just fine. If you run a firm and you've been thinking about doing something differently, buddy, your team, your team's gonna be just fine. It is a good time for accountants who are looking for work. If you carry a bunch of responsibility at a firm and you leave, that work's still gonna get done. Or it won't, but either way, the world's gonna keep spinning. And on the other side of that decision for you might be something better. So why do something new? I don't wanna be cavalier about the value of loyalty and of seeing something through and of doing the right thing, but quote unquote, doing the right thing can sometimes be the easy path because stopping to consider why you're doing what you do and whether this is the best thing for you, that is uncomfortable. Working yourself into the ground for the hundredth time, working your butt off to fool yourself into thinking that you're doing the best that you can. This, this sounded familiar. It's a great way to hide from the harder question of whether this is still the right thing for you. And maybe that new thing you're thinking about, maybe that vision's already super clear. Maybe it isn't. And you're just feeling like, boy, what I'm doing today, this doesn't feel like my forever thing right now. So let me share with you three bits of advice from a 34 year old millennial snowflake accounting YouTuber. So one, find the higher leverage version of what you are already doing. What ultimately led me to leave my firm was the fact that I could either sit down with a member of my team and teach them something new, or I could sit down and shoot a video and teach, I don't know, 500 people something new. Now, the path to making a living with a team of accountants, that was very obvious. I'd seen other people do it. I had a clear vision for what that life would look like, but making YouTube videos, can you actually make money doing that? Maybe. That was a big unknown for me. And admittedly, it was a side hustle for like two years before I'd convinced myself I could actually turn it into a viable business. But I got to this point where I realized sitting on one-on-one -on -one calls with clients, working one-on-one -on -one with staff, as much as I loved those things and as much as I could genuinely make a difference in those people's lives, that was no longer the highest leverage version of what I was capable of doing. I'd found a new way to leverage the skills that I had where I could make something and thousands of people could engage with it and it didn't require any extra effort from me. Now, on the subject of leverage, there's a hundred ways that we can, I think, better lean into this. I made a video at one point a while back about leaning into one-to-many services rather than just one-to-one -one services in your firm because I truly think most people who can sell an hour of their time for $200 are also capable of creating a $200 product that they could sell to hundreds 
hundreds of people. But leverage could take a whole bunch of different forms for you from teaching a room full of people or producing videos or podcasts or writing. Think about what the higher leverage version of your expertise looks like and how you get that stuff out there into the world. Okay, two more bits of life advice, but first, one of the ways I'm building my new business, sponsors, baby, roll the music. Hey, we're talking about the CFO Project. And if you've ever wanted to do more CFO advisory work, this is a program designed to get accountants unstuck. Whether you run a firm and you're mired in the transactional work rather than actually being a big brain advisor to your clients. If you're like, man, this accounting stuff, this tax stuff, it's for the birds. I just wanna run my own little little fractional CFO practice. That sounds nice. That's what this program is all about. They're not only going to talk about the right way to do this stuff, but all the squishy things around like finding clients, pricing engagements, actually building a business around doing CFO work and arguably just as valuable, you're gonna do it alongside a bunch of folks who are working through the same journey. This ad for the CFO project, it wasn't supposed to air for like two months or something like that, but I pulled it forward because it's kind of the perfect ad for this video. If you're feeling stuck right now and the CFO stuff is your jam, this could be a great program to get you unstuck. Check out the link in the video description below. They got some free resources that could help you get started. Now, second life lesson from a 34 year old millennial snowflake accounting YouTuber, design your life in a way that will be optimized for serendipity. Now, four years ago, I had like never posted to social media. I was like 95% of accountants. I didn't see the value in engaging in it until I went to an accounting conference and I looked around me and realized there are hundreds of people here working on the exact same problems that I am. Some of them have already solved these problems. Boy, I would it would sure be nice to steal their ideas. Some of them have a completely different approach that I haven't even considered. And once you are red-pilled to this, the bigness of the world, you never go back. The fact that somebody out there already has the answer to the question you're most struggling with, the workflow problem, the service line you're developing, somebody's done it and can cut years off of your learning process. So what does it look like to live a life that is optimized for finding that person who can show you the shortcut instead of wasting years of your life figuring it all out on your own? The internet is bigger than any of us can comprehend. Our little monkey brains cannot comprehend the number of people that are on the other side of the screen when you post that stupid meme to Twitter, to LinkedIn. We can't imagine the types of people who are out there, the nuance that's out there, the opportunity that that next post could bring. So whatever it is you're trying to learn, whatever niche you wanna get into, share your journey. You don't need to have anything to say that's particularly novel. Just share what you did today. Hey, set up a cool new zap to automate this thing, or just realize this type of pricing may work better for this service, or just figured out this weird technical thing for my client. The more you share what you're doing, the more you'll attract the folks working on the same things. And that's how the internet works. You publish to attract. You don't have to be novel. You're not, this isn't the New York Times. You don't have to be opinionated. Don't worry about that. Talk about the things that matter to you and you will attract folks who can accelerate the path that you're on and take you to new things you couldn't have even considered was a possibility. Posting online is the ultimate vehicle for serendipity. You are pulling the handle on a daily slot machine where the potential winnings go up every day. We just don't do it because we can't see what's on the other side of it. Now. My last life lesson from 34 year old millennial snowflake accounting YouTuber, it's not a forever decision. Recognize that these generally aren't forever decisions. We think these things will somehow define us, that we're setting us on a path that if it did go sideways, you could never recover from. When the reality is what we're actually doing is taking a path that will ultimately teach us more about ourselves, more about the world. Win or lose on the other side of that initiative, you're gonna have a better understanding of all of that and what you ultimately want to do, which is what we're trying to get to, right? Like what is the most fulfilling version of this sort of career journey that we're just starting out on? I don't care if you're in school, out of school, an old geezer, we are all on that journey. If you stop changing, like know that that's because it's a decision that you made. We go to college and they expect you in the span of a couple of years to decide what you wanna do for the rest of your life. And then you're an adult and you do a thing and, and we expect that that's the thing we're gonna wanna do for the rest of your life. It all seems very unlikely to me. But the more grown up we get, I think the more we get blinders to everything but that thing that you do. What do you mean? I run an accounting firm, that's not who I am. I'm a loyal person, I would never do that. But a lot of us, reality is, are not right now in a sustainable spot. Can you do what you're doing right now for the next 20 years? 30 years, 40 years, is it just gonna get better one day? Or is it easier right now to put your head down and work 
then stop to consider a harder question. Many of us are going through life. Going through life, doing what's best for the people around us and doing what's best for everyone else can be a trap. Now, devil's in the details of how you navigate that. Don't leave people in a bad spot, but balance that with what can sometimes feel like being selfish. You can't be so afraid of letting down your clients, your colleagues, the folks who in many ways you are a mean to an end, the one who signs their paychecks, files their taxes, does their accounting. You can't be so afraid of letting down the people for whom you are a means to an end that in the process, you disappoint the people who actually matter, your family, the people closest to you, and you, you knucklehead, you matter too. Aww. So don't let yourself down because you, you little snowflake, you got a lot to offer more than I think you even realize. Woo! Now, what am I doing on the other side of this little decision? Oh, buddy, woo, entirely too much. A daily podcast? That's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of work, which I guess I should have expected. It's called Jason Daly because I'm a narcissist. I grew a really sus beard there for a while. I got a neck tattoo. I'm gonna be like every accounting conference this year. Come out to the big ones, come and hang. You can tell me all about that big scary thing you're gonna do. Let's do it. Like a Mordecai, I ain't regular, feel like Jordan wearing 45. Traumatized, victimized, seen so 